Welcome back to our video series about building JSP web applications. In this video, we're going to look at how we can build something known as a JUnit test in order to test our game number Java class. What we're going to do is something known as unit testing. One definition by Kolawa and Huizinga is that in computer programming, unit testing is a method which we can use to test individual units of source code. It's a set of one or more computer program modules which together associated with control data, usage procedures, and operating procedures are tested to determine if they are fit for use. Kind of a mouthful, but basically we're going to create test classes which are used to test the actual classes of our program. With Java, we do unit testing through something known as a JUnit test. A JUnit test is a special type of Java class that we use for unit testing of the Java classes that you or I might write. These test classes can be saved and reused anytime the actual classes are altered. JUnit test classes will make use of a special set of JUnit classes in the JCL that make testing easier. There's a basic strategy whenever we do unit testing or use JUnit test classes. First, we want to create a JUnit test class for each of the classes in our model. For our example, we only have one called the game number class. For each method in the class that we're testing, we're going to include a JUnit test method. Some people advocate a form of development known as test driven development. This development philosophy advocates writing the JUnit test classes first and then the actual tested classes second. The idea is if our JUnit test classes are written with the appropriate interface to the methods and classes in mind, then they should already be useful in testing the class once it's created, and we'll know that that test works correctly. Let's go ahead and have a look how we might create a JUnit test to test our game number Java class. Here we see our current version for our guessing game JSP only application. We have three main components that we've started to create. We included files only for our game.jsp and the index.jsp and inside of the source folder in a package called game stuff We've also created our game number.java. While the JSP files do not have any code created in those yet, the game number class has been fully created in our previous video. The goal now is to create a new Java class, which is a type of Java class known as a JUnit test. We will put that into our test package that we created earlier. For this JUnit class, we're going to test pretty much each of the methods including the constructors that are here in our game number class. The idea is if we run the JUnit test, it should create a game number class and test each of the methods and tell us whether or not they are working properly. To get started, right click on our tests folder, pick new, and then let's search through the list of possible components to find a JUnit test. On mine, I do not see any listed in the main pop-up menu. So I'm going to click Other, and then I'm going to look through the available items here. Let's see, under Java. Notice under Java we have JUnit, and I can see two options in that folder, JUnit Test Case and a JUnit Test Suite. For us, we're going to use the JUnit Test Case. This basically is used to create one particular JUnit test class. A JUnit test suite is useful when we have multiple classes we want to test. We want to create multiple JUnit test classes that would be created together in what we call a suite. Make sure the JUnit test case is highlighted. Click on Next. In this page of the JUnit test case dialog, we're actually going to choose how we will set up the test. I'm going to stick with new JUnit 3 test. The source folder, notice it already mentions that it's going to be in the tests folder because I right-clicked on that to begin with to get this dialog. Let's give our JUnit test case a name. One naming convention here is to use the name of the class under test and then follow that up with the word 
test. So the final name of my current J unit test case would be game number test. Notice it has a superclass. That means it will inherit some capabilities from an already created J unit framework class called test case. This is important because we'll use some methods that it that it will inherit from that class. I'm not going to include any method stubs. I will go ahead and generate some comments. Under class under test, this is where we are going to connect this J unit test with the actual class that we want to test. So highlight the class under test box and click on browse. Notice nothing is listed here, but if we start to type a search will occur. So if I type a big G, notice I get lots of classes. Let's start with a big G. Let's go a little further. You see it narrows down the list as I start to type more of the name of the class that I want. And eventually the only thing left is the game number class that I created and is stored in my game stuff package. I will select that and hit OK. Notice the class under test now shows the game stuff package followed by the game number class. Click on next. Here we see a listing of all the methods that are available that we might want to test. At the top, you notice that we have the methods from game number listed. I'm going to start by clicking next to that so I get all of those methods. You might be asking, what are the rest of those methods? Recall that every Java class is actually a subclass or a child class of the main Java class called object. So as such, all Java classes inherit certain methods. Most of these we do not need to test. Occasionally, if we actually override a method, we will want to select that. For example, if we had created a two-string method here, we might want to select that for testing. For our particular JUnit test case, we are going to make test methods for most of the methods of our game number class. I'm going to actually uncheck the get value method. Turns out that while testing most of the other methods, we'll be calling that many times. So we'll be able to know whether that works or not as we test the other methods. So finally, we are going to choose the game number constructor with no parameter the game number constructor with a single parameter, the set value method, the set random method, and the increment method. We'll create JUnit test methods for each of those. So for now, hit finish and see what happens. Mine says that JUnit 3 is not on the build path. Do I want to add it? This is adding the Java library with all the JUnit 3 classes into this particular project. So yes, definitely I do want to add it. Pretty much has that already selected for me, so all I really need to do is hit OK. You'll notice that under my tests folder, I now have a class called game number test.java. Let's double click on the index for that as it has appeared in the editor as well. Let's look through what we have currently in our game number test.java class file. First, we have an import statement. Notice the import statement has brought from the junit.framework package. We've made available to this class the test case. Next, we have the line which creates the stub for the junit test class. Public class game number test, just like any other Java class. But this time, we extend our test case. So we are creating a subclass of the test case. So any method available to test case is also going to be available to our particular game number test class. The rest of the class currently just has a bunch of stubs for methods. Let's look at the first one. Public void does not return any particular data value. A method called test game number. Recall that in game number, we have one constructor with no parameters. It's taken that list that we checked in the dialog for creating the game number test class, and it's added the word test to the beginning of all the methods that we selected. So you see game number int, the game number constructor that takes an integer, test set value, test set random, and so forth. Inside of each of these methods, and these are the methods we're going to have to create to test our game number class methods, currently there's 
a method called fail, and it says not yet implemented. How did I know that's a method? Basically, by reading Java. Whenever we call a method, we always include parentheses after the method name, and sometimes we put in parameters. This time, the parameter is a literal string that says not yet implemented. Where did this method come from? Recall that we have extended or inherited from the test case class. So the fail method is one of those methods available to test case. Fail basically forces a failure on the test and it will use the parameter string as a message to say why it failed. In this case, not yet implemented. The idea here is we've created some test methods, but we haven't done anything to, to create the actual test yet. So if we were to create this and leave it, you'll get a bite to eat, what have you. When we come back, we wouldn't inadvertently run tests that haven't been created. They would all fail. Eventually, after we write the actual code to test our methods, we will want to either comment out or delete this line because we will then have implemented the test. Before we write our JUnit test methods, let's think a little bit about what steps we need to take to actually do a JUnit test. First, we need to set what expected values we think we need to get when we run the method. This is very much like the test you get in school. When I write test questions for my students, I kind of have an expected answer in mind. I'm testing the students and I'm saying, you answer the question. When they give me an answer, I will then compare their actual answer with my expected answer. And then I'll assign the appropriate grade. All of the grades in a JUnit test are either pass or fail. So basically, we are going to have to set up some expected value. We'll then create a test object, some object where we can actually run our game number class and run the methods that we want to test to get the actual value. So then once we have the actual value, we can compare the actual value with the expected value that we created earlier in step one. If these are equal, the test will succeed and we'll get some type of message or indication that the test was a success. If it fails, we'll also be given that indication as well. If it failed, then we need to look at either the class in the Java file that we are testing and fix it, or we may also want to examine our test to make sure that the test is correct. We'll see this in action as we create our JUnit tests. Let's start at the beginning. So here we want to set an expected value. We want to obtain a game number object, get the actual values or actual value, and then compare to test the method. This is the basic strategy that we will follow for all of our test classes. Emphasis on the word basic, as each of those steps may be done slightly different depending on the method that we are testing at the time. Let's start with our no parameter constructor. Think about game number test. In this case, if we run the game number no parameter constructor, we are going to have some type of default value. So let's create that. The value is an int, remember, so we will need to declare an int. Let's call it expected, so it will hold on to the expected value. And let's set that equal to zero. If you recall, when we created the game number class, we set the default value to zero arbitrarily. Our next step is we need to obtain a game number object. We do this just like we create any other object in Java. We call the class. We give it a name. And then we generally call the constructor. Now in this case, we have two constructors, but remember the one we're testing is the game number with no parameters, so that's the one we need to use. Notice I have an error. 
I can check what that error is in a couple of ways. I can put the cursor over top of the error indication and I see some quick fixes. Another option is over in the margin I see an indication of error and I see a light bulb. If I click on the light bulb, I also get an indication of what the error is and I get some quick fixes. Basically, I have not yet imported the actual game number. While the test class was created to test that, we need to make sure it can find it. So let's put the import statement. So when I double click that, I can scroll up and I can see that it's added the appropriate import statement to the top of the game number test.java file. And the error indication has disappeared. You may notice that we still have some warning indications. Basically, that's because we have not yet actually used the expected variable or the game number object that we have created. Let's get the actual value. The actual value needs to come from the game number object that we just declared and instantiated with the default constructor. We can get create a variable, int, let's call it actual, just makes sense. Then let's use the game number object to actually get the value. So type game number and then a period. In Eclipse, you'll see a nice list of all the possible methods that you can call from game number. One that we need, of course, is get value. The list will include those methods that we created, plus all those that it inherits from the regular Java object class. Okay, almost finished with our test. We have our expected value equal to zero. We have game number object that we've created, so we can use the methods. We've used a get value method to get actual. And you might think in this case we're actually testing both of those. If the test does fail, we will have to look at either the game number constructor or the get value method. The error could be in either one of those. In some cases, the error could be in our actual test as well. Now, finally, we want to compare to test the method. Recall, there's already one method that's been used that was inherited from test case. There are many other me methods that come from test case that we can use. To see those, let's do a little bit of a trick. Type the word this, dot. As we scroll down through this list, we start to see a bunch of different methods. Many of these methods were inherited from Java object, as you can see. You start to see some that were inherited from test case. The parent class, or the class from which the method originally is derived, is shown in light gray. So a bunch of these come from test case. Here's a few more that were inherited from a class called assert. Because a test case either extends or implements the assert class. So we get those methods as well. Assert equals is actually the one we'd like to use. Since we are comparing two ints, let's select assert equal int expected int actual. So just double click on that. Pretty much this is created the whole line that we need. Let's end it with a semicolon to get rid of the error. There is a warning here. A static method assert equals from type assert should be accessed in a static way. Mainly we can take care of that by getting rid of the this. I only use this, which you recall is the Java keyword that refers to this particular class that we are in, in order to see that list and get to that list. Even if I had left the warning, I would have no trouble just kind of clean up the color coding to get rid of this. Finally, we have now implemented this particular method. If we want to see that the actual code works and it doesn't fail automatically, we need to get rid or at least make unexecutable the line that has failed. So I'm just going to comment it out so it won't exactly run. Hit save. We've written our first test case. Let's run it to see what happens. Double click on the tab. Now I'm going to right click on the test case name. Right click. I'm going to do run as. You notice we have a couple options. I'm going to choose run as a J unit test. After a moment, you'll see this show up. You can actually take the J unit test and dock it in several places. Let's double click on it so we can see it bigger. What has happened here? This output shows us a few things. It shows us 
game number test is what's run. It took it 0 0.002 seconds. Here are all the test methods that are available. Notice the test game number actually passed. I can see that because it has a green check mark. We can also look at the data at the top where it ran five out of five methods. There were zero errors, meaning that test methods had zero execution errors, but there were four failures. Four methods failed as indicated by the blue icons here. This is not really a problem, as you recall, if we look back at the code, they all still have the fail method implemented in them. So successful in actually creating our first test case. Some other things appeared you may not have noticed. I can click run game number test and it will run again. So if I had gone in and changed something, let's change this to a one and see what happens. In this case I say expected equals one. I run the test and now it's failed. Double click on JUnit to get a bigger view of that. Over here in the failure trace, I get some more information. Because this failed, I can see a message that says expected was one, but actual was zero. Okay, and I can trace where that even occurred. Makes sense. I caused it to fail. In this case, we know that the, the failure is either in my test or in how I'm setting the number. Maybe we want it to be one by default but it was zero, so I would go and then I would change the actual method and game number, or maybe we do want the default to be zero and we've set our expected value to be incorrect. So I'm gonna change that back to zero and then hit save. Let's double click on game number test. Now we're going to go ahead and write the rest of our methods before we decide to run the JUnit test again. For our test game number int method, this is the one where we want to test the constructor that takes an int variable. So again, let's set up an int for our expected value. Let's just pick an arbitrary number. How about 49? You may pick any number you prefer. We need to get a game number object as before. Game number object game number equals new game number constructor. Remember this time we want to provide an integer. So I'm going to put in 49 here as well. Again, you may say, well, those are the same, but yes, I set up my expected. Now I want to run the actual methods and see, do they work to get me that same value? Let's call the game number method get value. I kind of wrote this one backwards, int actual equals that. Now let's write our assert equals statement. It's expected followed by actual. And last but not least, let's comment out the line for fail. We set it to some arbitrary number as our expected variable. We created a game number object using our game number int constructor, and we gave it the same arbitrary number. We got the actual value running game number get value method. Let's see what it was actually set to, and then we compare. Let's try set value. Let's do this a little quicker. This is almost like running our test game number constructor. I'm going to copy that and then tweak it. And be careful doing that. Let's set the expected equal to 49. This time when we obtain a game number object, notice we want to test the set value method, so we have to use that set value method. So this time when we create the game number object, let's use our default constructor, but then let's call the game number method 
and hand it the value that we want to set it to. So now the actual value is returned and we should be able to test that. Let's skip over set random for a moment and go to test increment because it's actually much easier. I'm actually going to start by just pasting our code from our first test method. Let's set expected to 1. So we want to see if we return a 1. Let's run our constructor that will set game number initially to 0. Then we need to actually run the increment method that we're testing. So let's do game number dot increment. At this point, game number starts out by default at 0. This should change it to 1. And now we should return a 1. You could start this with any number, but you would need to set game number equal to 1 less than that, then call increment to test. Now for the last method to test, the set random method. This one's going to be a little trickier to test. Think about it. If we create a random number, how are we going to know what to compare that to as an expected value? By definition, it's going to pick something unexpected. It is random. But what can we test? If we set a random number between two values, well, the number should come out to be between those two values, greater than the minimum and less than the max. We might also test that most of the time it's different than some expected value. So it's di definitely random. So if we want, we can set an expected value and then compare the two most of the time, they will not be equal, and occasionally we'll expect the test to fail, but only very rarely, depending on the range that we have set the random values to. So let's do that. For our expected value, let's create an expected variable. Let's set it equal to 500. Just so we note it, let's say we expect it to be different most of the time. Let's get our game number object. Just to make it worth our while, let's set it to 500 to begin with. Then, go back and change my variable name to match the gaming convention. Then let's run the set random method. And let's do this between zero and a thousand. Typical game. Finally, let's get the actual value. Now here's the tricky part, comparisons to test the method. We don't expect them to be equal, so we don't want to use assert equals. Instead, we want to check if the value is greater than zero, if it's less than 1,000, and that most of the time it's not equal to 500, or the expected value. Let's see what other methods are available. In addition to the assert equals, we have a cert not the same. Let's try that one. Most of the time they should not be the same. Notice we can also add multiple comparisons in the same J unit test. This is not always the best way to go about it because which one fails? Many times you want your J unit test to specifically tell you which failed, but we're gonna violate that for a little bit. Let's do a cert true. Notice with assert true, we can add a Boolean condition inside, just like an if statement. Assert that this if statement is true or false. Let's pick that, and let's test whether or not actual is greater than or equal to zero. This should pass if the actual value is something zero or greater. 
to also test if it's in if actual is less than or equal to 1000. I think this is about the best we can do. Most of the time, the random number should not be equal to the 500 that we originally set it to. It should change to something else. It, occasionally, maybe once in every thousand tests, that will fail. But all the time, we should get a number, but it's somewhere between zero and a thousand. Let's save and rerun our test. Notice that our test output is basically how we left it. But we've changed the JUnit test, and it's been saved. So let's just hit Run to run the test again. Look at that. Notice that the entire game number test, JUnit test, has passed. We can expand that, and we can see that all five methods have passed the test. At this point, we're ready to proceed creating the rest of our application, going forward with confidence that the game number class will work for each of our methods. This has been a Piercy production.